my writing isn't good enough. Whether you're journaling or doing creative writing, how many of us have thought that? Okay, I hear you friends, I really do. Writing is about to get a whole lot easier. I'm going to show you how to get from frustrated and intimidated to excited and confident. Before we get started, let's consider some of the struggles you may have faced. Maybe you've tried journaling, but you spend all your writing time circling around the heart of the matter rather than diving in. Maybe when you're done, you struggle to see the point of it all. Or maybe you have an idea for a story, uh, but you don't know where to start with it. Or you would, or you think you would, oh, oh sorry. Or you think no one would want to read your work. Or you have, or you hate everything that you write. I, oh, I've had that so many times where I hate everything that I write and I, I just can't get past like the next sentence. Or you just have this thought that keeps poking at you, but you don't really know what to do with it. Uh, and thoughts and fears like these leave you feeling frustrated and defeated and alone. So let's change that. The process that I am about to show you will make writing so much easier and more intuitive for you. And when we're done here, you can take this information and you can start implementing it in your writing on your own. You can start doing this today, hence start writing today, okay? Um, you may need to Google each of these steps for more information. You may want to create an accountability system. I know I need one. Um, and you may wanna find that community support, you know? Uh, but you can start using this process today. This is the same process that I learned in grad school, and I still use it for everything that I write, whether it's journaling, creative writing, or something that's more formal or business oriented. For those of you who don't know me, I am Erin Canning, and I have degrees in literature and a degree in writing, and I have 14 years plus experience editing and writing for publications and magazines. Um, but when I suddenly became a stay-at-home mom to my newborn and toddler, I stopped writing. I had no idea how to make time for myself let alone sit down and figure out what the heck to write about. My anxiety and depression used to skyrocket when I was alone because I didn't know who I was outside of parenting. I didn't know what I liked anymore. I had no hobbies, no interests. I felt like a blank page. I spent my free time scrolling through my phone to avoid this feeling of emptiness that was growing inside me. I got so depressed that I didn't want to get out of bed. And I felt zero joy around the family that I eagerly created. But I finally reached the point where I wanted to figure out what was going on with me. So even though I thought that I didn't have any stories left within me, I started writing. And at first, I didn't do so with the goal of publishing my work. I wrote to make sense of the world and myself. I wrote to sort through the overwhelm. I wrote to offload everything weighing on my mind so that I could have space to think. My challenges weren't going away, so I wrote to help myself find a way through them. And even though I initially hated my writing skills, they felt so stiff and shallow. Exploring different moments of my life helped me to find my way back to myself. I realized that my mistakes were followed by tremendous effort. I realized just how resilient I am. It's so easy to focus on the negative but once I'd written it all down, I could visibly see how much progress I had made. And so I'm better at showing myself compassion. And even more so through all that writing, I found hope. 
I rediscovered my love for my family and for myself. I found gratitude. I found strength. I found me. Don't get me wrong. I still have challenging days. Some are harder than others. But writing helps me feel grounded. Um, because I give myself space to be myself, I'm happier around my kids. I savor the special moments of a simple, you know, or I savor the special moments of simple joys. I love others more freely because I show myself love too. So I kept writing. And never in a million years did I think that my, like those first journaling entries would open the floodgates to my creative self. That I would find the confidence to start my own blog, to share my stories with others with the hope that even just one person out there would feel less alone. Never did I think that I'd find my purpose and passion again by merging my love for writing and parenting. In my childhood, I started out writing poetry and fiction. Never did I think that I would start writing personal essays and relish experimenting with creative nonfiction. Never did I think that I'd be hosting a Facebook Live series where I get to chat with other parents who write and help them share their journey and inspiration with even more people. It's been really exciting. And never did I think that I would be hosting my own writing workshops and watching my students transform right before my eyes to see their eyes light up with hope and possibility and potential. It's euphoric. It really is. So how does one know what to write about? How does one get started writing? How does one get past feeling like their writing isn't good enough? I'm going to show you the whole journey, my friends. We don't have time today to go into each of these in detail, but let me show you the steps that you can take if you were to do this on your own. And remember, a lot of this helps not only with creative writing, but also journaling and more formal writing too. Step one, I wish I had visuals for you guys. I'm sorry. I have to get the fancy stuff where I can like flip cameras and show you visuals. So sorry, bear with me. <laughs> okay. So step one is the brain dump. This is where you identify topics and you list all of the potential ideas that you could write about under each. This is what I walked you through yesterday's video when I challenged you to list three pivotal moments of your life. Okay. So step one is brain dump. Step two is madman. Madman. Okay. This is where you jump into the strongest memory or feelings and you let your creativity flow. Step three. Step three is the architect. This is where you identify the chunks that really draw you in and work with those ideas by massaging them and moving them around. Okay, you don't do that in the madman stage. Okay, step four, this is where you look at tightening up the ideas within each paragraph. Do you see how as we're going through these steps, the writing is starting to like narrow down more. You're starting to zoom in more. You start off with the madman and you kind of go all crazy and then you start narrowing in more and more. Okay, and then step five, the last step is... Uh, the judge. This is when the editor comes in and checks for spelling, grammar, all the little nitty picky stuff. Okay. Do you notice that step two is the madman where again, I said, that's where you jump in and you let your creativity flow. And it's not until step five when the judge shows up and starts looking at grammar and spelling and like all that little bits. Okay, the judge has no business crashing the madman's party. And a lot of times when we get caught up and we start saying how much we hate our writing or I can't figure out where I want this piece to go and you just keep deleting, it's because judge from stage five 
has crashed the madman stage. Okay. This is why it's so important. <laughs> okay. So there you have it, folks. That is the recipe for writing in a way that fosters excitement and creativity. And the reason why is because when you follow this path, you give yourself space to experiment. You, you give yourself space to be creative. You stop judging yourself way too soon and you enable yourself to open your mind to all the potential ideas within you. This path also reinforces that it's not about choosing one perfect story. It's about exploring different ideas, whether that's through journaling, fiction, nonfiction, whatever, so that we can expand our understanding of people, of experiences, and ultimately of ourselves. So now you can take everything that I have given you and you can go do it on your own. You have, I know that you have stories that need to be told, whether they're just for you or for your kids or for helping somebody if you choose to try to get it published. Regardless, if even just one person out there implements what I've shared these last three days and all the effort that I've put into creating this content will be 100% worth it. Okay. As I said, you can do this, but if you don't want to go it alone, then come back tomorrow and I'll show you how I can help. Same time, same place, nine o'clock EDT. Okay. Come back tomorrow night. But in the meantime, my challenge for you today is to pick one of the three items that you identified yesterday. So you have to go back and watch yesterday's video, although the shortcut was three pivotal moments of your life, okay? But choose one of those, and I want you to just start writing about that, okay? Because we kind of walk through the brain dump with yesterday's challenge, and then stage two is the madman, okay? And that's what I want you to try to do today. Pick one of those items from yesterday and start writing about that. Just jump in to the strongest feelings, okay? Dive into the madman. Set a timer for 10 minutes and see what emerges. Okay, that's it. I hope I'll see you guys back here tomorrow night so that, um, yeah, I can share how I can help you guys with this if you don't want to go it alone. But if you do, take what I've got here, implement it, and I promise you it will make your writing so much more intuitive and exciting and just let your creativity flow, okay? Especially because you're not going to be letting that judge come in and shut down your creativity. All right. So that's it for now, my friends. I hope to see you back here again tomorrow at 9 p.m. EDT. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I will be happy to respond. Okay. Good night, my friends. Bye.